So, Luki, tell, <laughs> <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, sure. Uh, I play a lot of Pangolier in North America. Um, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, I like to play sports outside of video games sometimes. And not competitively, but for fun. I like to I like to water ski. I like to play hockey. Uh, I don't understand. What? How? How did you get into Dota? Um, came here from from League. Uh, I went from League to CS:GO to Dota, and Dota was fun. From League yeah. to CS:GO to Dota. Yeah. Okay. How did you find League? I guess. How did that sure. come about? Oh wow, this is a deep interview into my life. Uh, <laughs> this is like a this is like a history. Um, okay, <laughs> sure. Uh, my neighbor came over. He was uh, and he he booted up the computer and he was like, "Hey, Lucas, here's this cool new game." And he was uh, he's like forty or something. He's like a doctor lurking in our our city. And anyways, he showed me this game and I was like, "Wow, this is fun." And then I would call his house and you know be like, "Hey, uh." I would I would hit a, hit up his son and I'd be like, "Hey, is your dad there?" And we would like call each other and hog the phone lines and play league together. Yeah, those were the days. That's actually hilarious. I'm glad you made like an adult friend that showed you league and eventually Dota, which ruins your life. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, my friends showed me Dota. I kind of got there from CS:GO, I guess. I wanted to actually be really so I was I was I wanted to be really good at League, but then uh -huh. uh, I kind of got bored of the game. And then I went to CS:GO because my friends were like, "Come play CS:GO, it's way more fun." And then I pr I tried. I was playing aim training, and I tried and I tried and I tried, and I for the life of me, I couldn't get good at that game, <laughs> and I fucking hated that game. But like I, it was like an acquired hate. Like I, I didn't mind it at first, and then I still don't mind playing it right now. But when I was trying to get good at it, I was really mad. I don't like it when players are better than me. Okay. So then I, well, I don't you, know if that, that's bad. Like that, that's a bad extreme of conscious, or that that's like not a good thing to think. But I think yeah. that shows your competitive spirit. So I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Yes. What? Uh, okay. So how did you meet Pango? Uh tell us the love story. <laughs> okay. Uh the patch came out. And then uh, I was like, oh, this hero looks like fun. And then I told myself, I don't want to play a new hero because everyone's going to be playing this hero. I don't know what I was going to stick to. I don't know what my plan was. But then I played it, and it was fun. So, yeah. You played it, and it was fun? Yeah, I had fun. Okay. What was it about? Yeah. <laughs> what was it about Pango that was so fun? I mean, he's like so much like a league hero. He's like all his mobility. He's got so many mobility skills. You can do whatever the fuck you want. You can win the game. Um, he's not counter pickable. He's got a roll. Uh, I don't know. Not that like his furriness. It doesn't matter. It's like yeah. It's the fact that he's so like mobile. Yeah. Okay, so you like the mobility of the hero. Yeah. Is he cute? Do you think Pango is a cute hero? Uh, it's okay. Um, yeah, he's cute compared to other heroes. So, what made you start streaming? Uh, well, I kind of wanted to stream myself playing League like a long, long time ago, but I always had shit internet, so I just didn't do it. And then, uh, finally I was like working a job at the steel mill. Not labor intensive, it was like an internship thing. It wasn't, it was still fun though. And then uh -huh. I was just chilling, and I was like, wow, I have internet speed. And then I, I, was, I was fired up the stream, you know? And then I was, like, chilling. Uh, it was a pretty low-key stream at the start. We didn't have many viewers. The OG fans will know. Uh, it was a pretty chill stream. And then, uh, yeah, I just kept streaming. Um, and it was fun. And then, like, a lot of stuff happened, and then I'm still streaming now. So. Yeah. So how long have you been streaming, I guess? I mean, my very first stream... 
was like five years ago when I was playing <laughs> Pokemon X on my 3DS and I bought a dock cam and I shined it on my 3DS and I like traded with people and battled with people and that was pretty fun. Uh, so that's like the original stream. Um, but like, I guess I've been streaming for like three years for Dota around there, I think. Two and a half? Two? I don't actually know. Probably two years. One and a half, maybe. Okay. So about two years. So when, so I, just to give maybe chat some backstory, I didn't really know about you, I think, until like February or March. When would you say that you like had this breakthrough on Twitch? Uh, I mean, I was just chilling for a long time. And then I just put twitch.tv slash Lukey Lukey in my name. And I just Q-sniped all of Mason's games. And then eventually, uh, <laughs> I think he yelled away a little bit too much, and I got myself a nice reputation somehow. Uh, yeah, I think I think that was the, the real summary. And then, like, yeah, there were some hosts here and there. You know, a lot of people were pretty nice to me in terms of, uh, like, me streaming, and they were pretty nice to, like, host me and, and uh, encourage my stream to other people as being a pretty cool stream to be in. Uh, it's probably, I don't know, like, there's some graphs that I've looked at before, and I, I had, like, it was a pretty low-key, like, 20-viewer stream for, like, five months or something, and then, uh, then we kind of got, got blown up a little bit by people, and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, Mason is the reason. Well, I mean, he helped. <laughs> I'll I'll say he helped. He he did a he did a lot of work there in that sense, I guess, yeah. Okay. Um let's see, I had another question. So what's been like your favorite th thing about streaming? Uh I give you a different answer, not on camera. But on camera, uh it's pretty fun. You know, it makes it feel like you're not just wasting your time playing video games. You're also kind of, like, interacting with people, and it's more fun. You're making a lot of connections. Yeah, you stuff. meet people. It's it's cool. It's cool. I know, like, every time I start up my stream and I just see people say hi in chat, you know, it's like a heartwarming thing. Like, wow, this guy saw that I, I'm streaming, and then he, like, came in to check out my stream. Like, it's a, it's a heartwarming thing, you know? That's so cute. Um, okay, so how do you how do you deal with uh, going on like a six lose streak on Dota while streaming? Uh, it's pretty depressing, actually. It's pretty hard for a lot of streamers, I think, to stay sane sometimes. Uh, I think the worst part about Dota compared to other games is that when you're losing, so let's compare it like three other games. Let's play. Let's talk about CS:GO, League, Dota. Okay, so CS:GO, every round's a new round. You can kind of like lose, but each round is like you're kind of on equal footing. Yeah. League, you can surrender at 15 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever. Dota, if you're losing a game, you're stuck in this game until the game's over. And you have to, like, either try your best or give up. And it's so demoralizing to have to play it out. And when you just do this, like, five times in a row, it's such a shitty feeling. And I think that's an advantage that other streamers have over Dota streamers. Other people can just, like, surrender. I mean, yeah, you can break your items, but, like, it's still sad, like, watching people come up and kill your throne. Uh, what do I do? I mean, I evaluate what, what I was doing wrong. So, you know, there was one time I was happy. I was picking Bloodseeker, having a great time playing Bloodseeker offlane. Uh -huh. And I just lost, like, five games in a row on Bloodseeker offlane. And so I really evaluated it, and I was like, huh. Like, I analyzed my performance, and I was like, is this my <laughs> fault? Is this my hero's fault? Like, is this worth the mental, like, I don't really have the mental fortitude to continue spamming this hero, and I don't even think it's good. And so mm. I, that, that probably doesn't really help. But uh, Yeah, so you evaluate your own performance. and. Uh... How does that make you not feel defeated, though? Uh, I feel defeated a lot. Um, I sometimes try to... I try to get some sort of... Like, after I lose more... Okay, so here's the actual strat. As you lose more and more games, you should be like, oh, I'm at a much lower MMR than I was at before, so I should play against a lot shittier players. So mm -hmm. I should be able to take advantage of their shittiness a lot more. Mm-hmm. Um, or I'll also hit a land where people don't know that I play Pango, and I can just pick that hero and just gain free MMR. <laughs> um, those are the those are the two kind of things. But 
Yeah, that's how I look at it. Okay. So what's it like uh, playing a game where everyone knows who you are and as soon as they see you, they ban Pango? Uh, it's pretty annoying. Um, I don't really plan my main account anymore. Can't really climb on that one anymore. Uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, I'm just living life, picking new heroes. It's good for me, you know? It's good for me. Yeah, I've seen your revenge. Uh, it's good. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure in what context. I just, no, what no, context it's good. It's good. Bench. Okay. It's good. Uh, so when you play Venge, you micro a lot. Do you like micro heroes? Uh, no. But I, I learned to deal with the HOD units. Those aren't that bad. Now they're kind of fun. So what, what do you do outside of Dota? I don't want to answer these questions, actually. Let's just assume that. Like, let's go to the next question. <laughs> I'm currently an unemployed person that has graduated. Uh, yeah, let's move on. Okay. Nice. Uh, what advice would you have for Lakari when, as he learns how to play Bangle? Uh, first of all, don't buy phase boots. Okay, go back. Going back to the other question. Okay, I just graduated like a few months ago. I haven't. I haven't. I'm not just been unemployed for like two years or something. Like, I, I just graduated, so I, I have some time. Okay, Lakari buys phase boots on Pango, which is bad. Uh, I offered to give him coaching. Uh, the follow up was not really there, so I kind of just moved on with my life. I'm fine, just solo queuing. Uh, yeah. Um, buy the items that I tell him to buy. I guess is good advice. I have a guide on Steam. Oh, you, you do. Follow. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, here I'll, I'll send it. I'll, I'll I'll put it in your chat so your 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 Pango aspiring viewers can can hit it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh, let's see if chat has any questions for you. We can be selective sure. with the questions. We don't have to answer all of them who is the best uh player in dota right now uh i don't know i guess anna or probably or somebody like that i don't know someone from og i'm sure maybe anna's the goat anna okay what do you think you would be doing if valve never released pango uh Maybe I'd go back to League, I'm not sure. I mean, I was already playing this game before Pango came out. Like, I was grinding this game. So, I don't know where I'd be. Who was your main before Pango? I don't remember. <laughs> I, don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I think I played Batrider, but I was a shitty Batrider. Uh, I just played Omni and Abaddon. Like, traditional shitty offlaners that don't actually have an impact. They just sort of... uh. They're so long for the ride, you know? Well, that's that's what I think they are. But other people would say, oh, you, know, you should carry the game on those heroes or something. Okay. When you were in school, how much Dota did you play on average a day? Sure. Like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing. It changed over the years. It changed over the years. Like, the first years... I mean, I was pretty try-hard first year of university. And then second year, you know, it's a little bit less. Third year, a little bit less. Fourth year, you know, I skipped a, a mighty, mighty lot of classes to grind Dota. And, uh, you know, in my fifth year, because, you know, I, I interned for a year, so I was, like, off. So my last year of school, I played I played way too much. Probably, like, five hours a day. Or probably higher than that, actually. Okay, yeah. so a lot of Dota. But I still graduated, guys. Anybody who's uh, who's worried about that, just make sure that you graduate, though. That's important. Yeah. And, and you, you get smart. School is for learning. Only use Dota for breaks from studying. <laughs> and to have fun. Are you afraid that if you like branch out and start learning new heroes, uh, that people will leave your stream or that that will affect your viewership? Uh, I'm more worried about me sucking at those heroes. <laughs> like, it's kind of... Sometimes the learning experience of getting good at a hero is like, is like really hard, right? Because you you pick a hero and then you like you're trying to learn it and then you stream yourself playing it. You want to be at like a higher level with that hero before before shit hits the fan, you know. It's like it's like a worrisome thing. Like I wanted to watch a bunch of a bunch of Sand King replays before I played Sand King on stream, 
because I was worried about what would happen if I picked Sanking on stream. And what happened was is I went like four and fifteen and we lost. Mm -hmm. And I missed all my spells and I didn't know what to do in lane. So uh yeah. Yeah, I I don't even know what the question was, but uh that you will have less viewers. Uh yeah, I mean I get kinda worried about that a little bit. Most of it's just because other people stream though, and then they're like there's like priority streams, right? Like RTC streaming, gotta watch RTC. Mason streaming, gotta watch Mason. And then everyone's offline. It's like, oh, do I watch? I guess I guess I can watch Lucas, or I can go to my my just chatting my favorite just chatting streamer, uh, um, and hit hit those hit those girls up or something. I, I'm sure that's what's going through my viewers' minds. What do you think about Arteezy? Ah, uh, cool guy. Um, great player. Very fearful of playing against him in lane. Um, cool guy. I think he's tall. I met him in person once. What? Uh, I said, hey, I'm that Pango guy. And he's like, oh, yeah, I remember. He's like, hey, can I get a picture? And he's like, yeah, sure. This was two years ago. Really? Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I know I'm a little bit better now, but we're not, like, like I don't really message him that much or anything. But, yeah. Nice. Okay, that's cool. He knows who you are. Yeah, yeah. He lives in Toronto, too, which is cool. Um, so I have some friends there, you know, maybe Jube, me and Arteezy, we're going to go get food or something. I mean, I don't know. If Corona hit and now nobody, nobody does anything, but who knows? Yeah, that makes sense. Do you have any plans of going pro? No, I suck. Maybe if I get a, a lot better sometime soon or I stop sucking on certain heroes. If Bloodseeker ever becomes relevant, I think that I'll have a leg up on other players. <laughs> because of the practice? Yeah, because of the practice. And the theory uh, okay. crafting. The, the, the theory crafting. Okay. Why do you blue? Why do you do Bloodseeker offlane? Okay, so here's the strat. I mean, I'm just gonna <laughs> tell you the strat, right? Yeah. So the so people see me. They pick. They pick Pango, expecting me to first pick Pango. Like, here's what happened earlier today. I knew there was a Techie spammer, so I knew he was gonna pick second phase. I picked Techie second phase, and then Techies got banned, right? And mm -hmm. then he was owned. It was a free win. Okay, so what happens is they first pick Pango. I first pick Pango. You know, they they're like, haha, the hero gets banned, haha. But then if I don't first pick Pango, then I can pick Bloodseeker second phase and then kill them. But every time I do that, I actually just lose the game before I feel like I even counter the Pango. And I feel like Rupture is such a bad spell. And the hero is just dog shit right now. So that's... uh, Huh. So you're trying to counter pick your own hero. Yeah. Yeah. And then I punish players too. Sometimes people get a little bit too complacent. Like, hey... That's Luki on the other team. His name is Luki on, on Steam. You know, sometimes I'll change my name to mix it up, but sometimes I won't, you know, and they'll just be like, oh, that's Luki. I'm not going to pick Pango. You know, you got to make sure people don't get complacent. You got to teach them a lesson sometimes. So, yeah. Uh, when they let Pango through, second uh, phase, yeah. you just pick him. Yeah. Yeah. I respect that. You're going to teach them a little lesson. Never let Pango through. <sighs> yes. Yes. Are you imagining your pro career would just be like instant ban Pango first every time? Yeah. So you know how they, they, they have a two ban phase now before first pick? Yeah. Uh, they, if they reduce that to zero, I will have a career. <laughs> Easily. Because I can first phase, I can force the enemy team to first, I mean, maybe not actually. And we get first pick every game. I don't know. It's not, it's not clear cut. It's not clear cut. Yeah, but you would have a, you would have a greater chance. Yes. Okay. What's your most hated hero in Dota? Uh, Bane. <laughs> it used to be Bloodseeker, but that hero is just dog shit now. Bane. That's it. It's like Bane. Oh, Ursa's pretty fucking stupid. Uh... It's mostly Bane. Bane's so noob friendly. You just like can't show by yourself or you'll get gripped and then you die. Yeah. I love Bane. Bane is my favorite hero. Bane is my second favorite hero. Because <laughs> uh, I'm a noob, so it's noob friendly. Um, Let's see. What will happen to your stream once you find a job? Oh, well, I'll probably still stream, but probably not as much. I've streamed while working. Like when I worked at the steel mill and I started up my stream, I just streamed when I came home from work. Uh. It was kind of a little bit stressful because I couldn't stream for that long and I'd have to go to sleep later on. Like, I'd get home, it'd be like five. I actually worked out when I was at the Steel Mill. Those were the better days. But it was like so weird. It's so weird working and then like coming home and streaming and you have like no free time. 
and then like when you're on the weekends you're like i don't really want to play video games because then i'll just have to work again and i don't know it's weird but uh i'll probably find a way to make it work i'm sure okay uh okay i have a final 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 question so uh i noticed you recently got into like casting is that something that you enjoy and want to do more of i think i don't have the energy for that i know i there's way too many times where i don't have the energy for casting like i'll just like think oh i want to watch this game but then i don't really want to cast it Mm. uh it's very rare that i want to cast the game and i feel like it's going to be a little weird to uh if i did start casting randomly people are gonna be like Who's going to trust this no-name? Uh, people are going to be like, wow, who's this Who's this Pangolier player? He doesn't know anything about Dota, and I'd be analyzing a game. And you know, I feel like I have a bad reputation to, to start this off with. I probably have to get a better reputation in Dota before I pursue casting. But right now, it's not really something that I'm thinking of right now. Okay. Yeah. Just do the other things. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's all. That's all the questions that I have for you. Thank you for coming to my stream and uh, hanging out and answering some questions.